blast from the past when it comes to Detroit. Yeah, not many cities can celebrate a homegrown product that's been around, forget a load of this, 150 years. Mm -hmm. But as our photojournalist Alex Atwell shows us, one uniquely Detroit favorite has withstood the test of time. I like Detroit history and I like the products that uh, you know Detroit produce. I think everybody has a Verner story that grew up in the Detroit area. My name's Keith Wunderlich and I've been collecting Verner's memorabilia for 35 years at least. I try to create basically a 1940s type soda fountain here to display some of the Verner's advertising that I have. Love the brand, love its connection with Detroit, and uh, love the fact that it's turning 150 years old this year. It is the history, it's the taste, it's still a very unique ginger ale compared to all the rest of the ginger ales that are out there. Um, the fact that it was a family-owned company for the first hundred years, I mean, just all of those things made it really special for the city of Detroit, and, uh, and their advertising's pretty cool, too. Werner's was made as a soft drink to be had by itself. Uh, whereas a lot of the other ginger ales that we taste, you know, like Canada Dry or something, that's a mixer. Um, and most ginger ales are mixers. They're not meant to be had just by themselves. But Verner's was always meant that way. And so uh, it was made stronger, it was made sweeter, it was made different than other ginger ales and remains very unique today. Really, without the Civil War, this might not have happened. James Verner, uh, worked in a drugstore in Detroit, Higby and Stern's drugstore, and when the Civil War broke out, he decided to uh, enlist in the Civil War. Before he enlisted, because he worked in a drugstore, and all drugstores had soda fountains at the time, uh, he was messing around with a ginger ale formula but couldn't get it quite right. So he goes away to the Civil War for four years and comes back and decides that he would open up his own drugstore that had his own soda fountain, and so he took out that cask of uh, ginger ale extract and all of a sudden it was perfect. And that four years of aging had mellowed the taste and made it much more drinkable than it had been without that mellowing. Um, and one of the slogans for many years was, uh, you know, mellowed four years in wood. What he was actually making and aging was, was the syrup, was the extract. And so uh, then when, that, uh, when that's ready, uh, it's mixed with a seltzer water at the time. You know, those old seltzer bottles that you see people squirting into a glass. So they'd fill up, you know, maybe an ounce of syrup and then the rest of the glass would be uh, seltzer water and that would make your Verners. Everybody has a story about stopping at the soda fountain before or after the Bablo boats. They had a drive-up service where you could drive up and have, uh, you know, waitresses come out to the car and, and serve you Verner's. Just a fantastic place. Just on one side of it, and it had three sides, it went, you know, on three sides of a, of a huge room, there were 12 different people waiting on folks from behind that soda fountain. That's how busy it was. That's the kind of place it was on a Saturday night. It was a fixture right at the foot of Woodward. It was something that everybody went to. Uh, it was a really famous and big part of downtown Detroit. What a cool basement. We've gotten Keith Wunderlich out of the basement now to join us live in the studio. And you know, one of the favorite things people talk about with Verner's is making Boston coolers or a float. Mm -hmm. So you're here, you have ice cream. You brought reinforcements. Ab absolutely, yes. right. And Sanders ice cream, of course. So you yeah. know, a couple of Detroit favorites. Sanders is celebrating their 141st birthday this year. So wow. uh, with Verner's at uh, 150. So I've been around for a long time. The way that I like to do it is to pour a little bit of Verner's in the glass before the ice cream, because it does have a tendency to expand once mm -hmm. you get the ice cream in there. Yeah. So this ice cream is just the right consistency, kind of soft to get it in here. So I'll put a couple of scoops of uh, good old Sanders ice cream in with the, the Verners, uh, and then add the rest of the Verners. Mm -hmm. And right now, this is just a float, a Verners float. The ice cream is, is floating in the Verners. Uh, if you wanted to make this a Boston cooler, you take your spoon and stir it up in one milkshake-like uh, consistency, and it's absolutely Have you ever fantastic. had anything like this with I uh, have. I had it yeah. here before. Oh, you did? Yes, okay. I did. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. This, this, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, though. Very good. I think sometimes yeah. when there are classics in a community like this, people don't know where it actually came from. Where did the concept of this come from? Well, uh, James Werner was working in a... a, a 
drugstore mm -hmm. when he was a teenager, and all drugstores had soda fountains. And mm. so he was just messing around with the formula, and wow. uh, he wanted to be, you know, he wanted a, a unique ginger ale, and it's remained unique this entire time. I mean, there's really nothing quite like Werner's. In, it's delicious. Uh, in the so, Keith, is that the Stanley Cup with a spigot? What is that? <laughs> what is, look at this thing. That's it's, it. It's just a, a beautiful porcelain dispenser from 1940s. And wow. uh, so Werner's would have these in their own uh, plant in their soda fountain, but they'd also have these out at various places, you know, around wow. the city. And uh, you could go to, you know, any soda fountain and hopefully find one of these. So what else did you bring with us uh, over here for us to see? Well, I brought just a lot of cardboard advertising, which is all very cool. Some of the best advertising from the 1940s and 1950s. I think there's absolutely fantastic uh, mm -hmm. advertising. Uh, the Gnome is great. Gnome started in about 1930 and was always part of their advertising. Um, and so all just little pieces of the things that they put together. And there's just thousands of pieces That's of the advertising that Vernon yeah. produced. This is beautiful. And what about the anniversary? That's coming up quickly, right? A celebration. Absolutely. We're celebrating the 150th on June 11th. There's a week of activities preceding that. We've got about 20 Detroit restaurants that are making wow. Werner's menu items that That's week. Awesome. Um, and uh, what we're trying to do uh, on the 11th is we're going to raise some money to have a historical marker for Verners in Detroit. There's no awesome. marker uh, for really? that, and so we mm. want to uh, buy one of those uh, for the city. And so uh, people can go on our Verners Club website and go to the GoFundMe page and uh, help us out with that. Right now we've got about only 600 towards the cost of about 5,000 for a marker. Mm -hmm. So we'll put those links yeah. on our Facebook page. But tell everyone why it's important to have that marker. Well, you know, Detroit is, is such a great city, and it's had such fantastic products. I mean, Verner's, of course, Sanders, Stroh's, I mean, all sorts of great things. And um, it's made Detroit what it is, a great community. And uh, it's a, a fantastic product. The oldest pop in America mm. came from Detroit, Verner's. So we, got, we need to celebrate. Great that. history. Yes. Good to all see right. you. Thanks Thank for bringing you. this Thank all you. in, Thank Keith. Hey, next up.